I should say to the, uh, the organisers, I think it's a fantastic array of um, presentations this morning, both in the first session and, uh, and this session. I found uh, fascinating indeed. And perhaps, perhaps so the, the key question, the key question that I uh, have in my mind is why well, we've heard a lot of detail about uh, what's going on. There are those uh, elephants in the room. Um, the economics, particularly the economics of fuel and the distances for traveling, and then politics. Mm. The politics of the high north and the way the world is changing. Uh, and if one was a pessimist, one may think we're on the verge of a new Cold War. After what's happened in the last week with President Trump's uh, rejection of the intermediate uh, nuclear uh, uh, proliferation deal. Now that could have serious implications for the development of the high north and the speed of, uh, speed of things. Victor. So, Harold, perhaps to you first, on that uh, political note, are you fearful of the medium term and what may become of a more uh, 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 tense political relationship between East and West again? Yeah, we are, in general, we are uh, concerned about the situation uh, in the world uh, with the increased uh, debate on, on the uh, trade uh, and trade uh, potential trade war, uh, and that could also, uh, of course, uh, influence uh, activities in the high north and, and elsewhere in the world. So, so we are we are cons concerned about the situation, but we have to uh, follow it, and we have to be. I think we have to be optimistic. If if you look around us, there is a lot of challenges. We don't know the, uh, all the answers, but we have to be optimistic and. Uh, uh, from from uh, history, we know that we will find uh, uh, interesting solutions. <laughs> Sigrid, your view? If I'm concerned? Well, I think, um, as um, I, I share the opinion here, because um, I think we, we have to look at what's uh, going on, and there's, of course, uh, many reasons to be concerned about what's going on in the world, uh, but we have to... Um, to, to look at um, the possibilities for, for actually being a part of the, uh, of, uh, of the decision. Uh, and, um, and I think um, uh, the time is now for us to speak up. So I think we just need to be focused on that uh, rather than uh, only on the concerns. Felix, very interesting the statistics you showed about the development of destinational shipping as you turned it, which is uh, much based around the uh, uh, resource uh, input and uh, outputs. Um, the question of the, high, uh, the, the Northern Sea Route has been a very romantic one over the last decade. Uh, uh, it uh, captures easy headlines, dare I say it. Um, and as your statistics show, there was the peak in 2013. Uh, and the, the numbers of ships trying it now are far more reduced. Obviously, this is a long-term question, but a lot, of, a lot of people who are involved in the business um, said it was the, the economics of fuel that drove that peak to people explore. With oil now back around $80 a barrel and still going north, if you forgive the pun, do you see as that's potentially stimulating a, an increase in activity again? Yes, I think so. I think it's a matter of economics. And, uh, and uh, it is really, I mean, it's, uh, it's the value of the time you save, which is yep. uh, the, the, the key factor. And of course, that value is, is uh, fuel, but it's also the freight market. And of course, freight markets have been very low. That's a negative in, in that sense. And, uh, and, and the fuel prices have been low, uh, low, high and then low and then high, uh, somewhat higher again. Uh, I think, uh, I, I think uh, the, the, it will, the, the Northern Sea Route will be, will be uh, continue to develop, not you know, by exponentially, but it will continue to develop as as uh, people realize that this is a viable route. And of course, there's also lack of ice class vessels which can, can use it. So uh, over time, I believe that there will be, you know, the fact that you shorten the route by 40% uh, 40, 40 depending on where you start, 40-50%, it makes a big, big difference, but depending where you ship from and where you ship to. Thank you for that. Now, uh, I think we need to uh, wrap up, I uh, understand, because we are, um, are right out at the end of our time. Now, if I could uh, once again, though, offer the, uh, offer the speaker's uh, certificates as a uh, mark, of, uh, mark of the donation that's being made for a female student at the uh, World Maritime Thank University you. in Malmö. Thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And... You please, a, a, a very big hand for the uh, speakers, because I think they've done a fantastic job.
And I'm told we're going to try and keep lunch to only 45 minutes. That's the bad news. The good news is there's an extra room. The panorama room has been opened up. So hopefully there'll be more than enough uh, uh, space for us to uh, put our elbows on the table, talk as well as eat. And so see you um, in three quarters of an hour when my friend uh, Craig Easton will be uh, taking the uh, reins. Thanks a lot.